Hey guys, it's Anthony Fontana here. I'm a CPA with EA Tax Resolutions. Well, if you got a, a notice from the IRS with proposed changes because your tax return doesn't match what the IRS has on record, and there's a big amount due on there, or any amount due for that matter, I'm here to let you know if we can get that amount lowered. Stay tuned. All right, so I understand that getting these notices or any notices for that matter from the IRS gets that heart rate up and people get panicky. I talk to you guys all the time over the phone. However, there's one thing you got to know about these CP2000 or the 2501 notices from the IRS. These are computer generated. You file the tax return and you missed either like a W2 or 1099 that was filed on your behalf. The IRS has record of this. It didn't show up on your return. And since they have record and they match that with the return, it's computer generated that a notice goes out to you. There's not an actual agent that's on your case. So that's something that should put you at ease here. And uh, also the fact that this happens to a lot of people, people do make mistakes. Now there's one thing you should know though, and that's very important is the response state on these notices. We want to make sure if we can, by all means, try and make that response date. If we miss the date, it's not the end of the world. We can still respond to the notice. It just, it's like pulling teeth. It's really tough to deal with the government when we miss these types of deadlines. So if there's anything you take out of this, be sure to make, uh, to respond to the CP2000 or the 2501 by the response date that they give you. All right, so you came to this video because you wanna know how to get that amount that the CP2000 or 2501 states on there. You wanna get that amount lowered. How do we get that lowered? Um, or at least what issues are on that notice that are eligible to get lowered, okay? Um, and let's go, let's start it out here. So we need to start off with either page two of the CP2501, which looks something like this one here. Okay, uh, difference between your 1040 and the information by other sources, right? This one has wages and dividends. Um, or page three, generally, of the CP2000 notice. And you'll see here, explanation of changes. And there's probably more pages to this. But anyways, that's where we start. And we take a look at what, um, issues are uh, are the reason for these proposed changes, okay? So like this one's gonna say interest and the other one has, let's see here, taxable wages and taxable dividends. Um, also interest on there too, see that? Um, and this one also is gonna have uh, securities. Okay, so um, let's go through the different issues. So number one, let's see here, we'll go through ones we cannot fix, right? Whatever's on these notices, we kind of have to put our hands up in the air. It is what it is, generally speaking, okay? And these are common ones. So number one is interest. Whatever's on there, we're gonna get stuck with. This would have to be considered taxable income. Um, number two is dividends, okay? So we have that here something like this here, okay? Taxable dividends, qualified dividends. Both of these, there's really nothing we can do, okay? Uh, Schedule D, capital gain, here's another one. Really not much we can do about that. Um, and or wages, like we saw here at the beginning, right? Something like this, taxable wages. We would, we're gonna get stuck with whatever is on there, okay? Uh, now here are things that maybe we can do something about. And uh, the reason I say maybe is because it all depends on kind of the reason why you got this income. There's other factors to this, okay? Um, some of the tax law behind it, okay? Number one would be, um, and these are, this is really common, um, retirement account. So like you'll see right here, right? We have some retirement account. Um, they have some, some income here. Depending upon the reason why we got the retirement or that 1099R, right? That's what this this right here is saying. Um, maybe it was a rollover from one 401k to another 401k. Now that would not be taxable, right? If we miss that um, and that's what happened, that would not be taxable. Well, there's something we could do about that. But if this is just a, a draw on a retirement account that um, you're taking, you gotta pay tax on it, it is what it is. Maybe we can avoid if there's a penalty on that, maybe there's something we can do about that. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, if you're just pulling money out uh, to draw on your retirement, you're probably gonna have to pay tax on it. So again, it's maybe something we can do about this uh, this retirement account, okay? Or uh, retirement income, uh, I should say. Another maybe is 
is other income. So if you got something that looks something like this, let's see here, other income down here, right? Um, obviously big amount here. So you, you know, gotta be careful on this one. Um, potentially there's something we can do. There's a lot of different types of income. Maybe there's some expenses we can use against the income. That's also a maybe, right? Um, there's gonna be a lot of underlying factors on there. And the other one I would say uh, would be rents or royalties. That would be like another one for sure that potentially there's something we can do about that. Maybe get that thing lowered, okay? Uh, maybe you got some expenses to go against the rent um, or, and or the royalties, right? Either or of those, um, maybe we can get that thing lowered. All right, so meat and potatoes, what can we fix? What are things I see a lot um, and that you could definitely um, probably do something about? Number one I see all the time um, are securities. That's that's probably the most frequent that I, that I get here. And that's here, right? You get something that says securities here. And the, and the reason why we can do something about this, you'll see that right there, right? Um, the reason we can do something is reported by others that is like the gross proceeds that you get from the sale of your security, like a stock, bond, mutual fund, ETF, something like that. Um, and really the way it works on taxes is, is you should only pay the tax on the difference between your purchase price and the sales price. So if they're only reporting the sales price, i.e. it's happening here, that would be incorrect. We should be able to get that lowered. And the amount we get that lowered by is the amount that you bought it for. So in this case, uh, let's say if I were to respond to this one, I'd go back and get like the Charles Schwab, uh, the gain loss report from them and uh, respond to the CP2000 with the, with the stock basis or the, the cost basis, the, what you purchase these stocks for um, and get that, that amount lowered probably by a lot, right? There's, there's a couple different brokerages here. Um, that's number one, very common. This is not an all-inclusive list. I wanna make sure I do get that clear. I didn't get that clear at the beginning, but this is not an all-inclusive list. There are other issues, uh, but these are like the most common that I do see, okay? Number two is, let's see here, non-employee compensation. Let's take a look at that one. Right, right here, here we go. Non-employee compensation, right? We got a fair bit amount here. Um, most likely there's something we can do about this. Maybe not, it, actually that should be a maybe, but most likely something we can do about this because this is business income. There's probably some business expenses to lower that income. That's probably how I would respond uh, to this notice here. But again, depends on the facts here of the case. Uh, payment card, third party transaction. Let's see, this one right here, right underneath it. Okay, um, this is almost identical, this non-employee compensation in terms of this is business income. You had a credit card processor that was processing all the cards for your business. Uh, you didn't get it on the return, so we need to get that on there. Most likely you got expenses against this, but again, depends on the case. Why is that there? Okay, another one, um, let's see here, we have the HSA. Um, can I find one? Yes, here we go. Here's an HSA right here. Uh, nope, not that one. Here it is, HSA, right? Health savings account distribution, right? You um, pulled money, whoops, look at that, doing way, clicking way too much. Uh, you pulled money out of a health savings account and you didn't put that on your return. And normally you'd say, hey, Anthony, uh, HSAs are not taxable. You're right if they're used for qualified medical expenses. But the thing is, if you don't put it on the return, of course the IRS is gonna assume that you didn't use it for qualified medical expenses and they're gonna to wanna to tax it. So that's why I say there's something we can do about this, okay? We just have to respond to the notice saying that the full amount, if it was, um, was distributed for qualified medical expenses and obviously you'll have to prove that when you send that in, okay? Um, and then a big one that I actually got um, not too long ago here was a, um, look at that, real estate sale. Okay, geez, look at that amount um, that they, uh, the IRS is now gonna wanna tax. It's incorrect. So they sold some type of property, um, and in this case, it was actually their primary home, and uh, the IRS is coming through and trying to tax them on the sales price of their house. Okay, that's not incorrect. This is, this is real similar to like the securities. You bought the home for some price, you sold it for a different price. The difference between those two prices is what we should get taxed on, not on the sales price of the house, okay? Um, and in general, 
if this is your primary home, you're probably not paying any taxes because we get an exclusion of a gain of up to two. 250,000 if you're single or 500,000 if you're married. So generally speaking, people who sell their primary homes do not pay tax because of that exclusion. And in this case, that's exactly what happened. They um, had this big amount due on here. I don't even have the amount on here, but uh, oh, there it is, 160, right? That they're proposing. We had to go to zero. So um, yeah, and that's because of the exclusion and we reported the basis on the, on the other purchase price of the house. Um, All right, again, I want to reiterate, this is not an all-inclusive list. This is uh, just the more common issues that I see come through my desk a lot. Hopefully, this was helpful for you guys. If it was, you know what to do. Help me out. Subscribe to this channel. Hit that like button. Um, I will have some videos coming up within the next couple of weeks showing um, some live examples of CB2000 and 2501 notices that I've responded to myself on client's behalf the letters that I've written, all the justification or the documents that I've used to um, support um, our claims and the response from the IRS on these. So if you want to know how to respond exactly to these things and you know what I've done that have actually worked in the past, uh, stay tuned to the channel and uh, be sure to check those out. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much.